Porum pum porum. That was so unneeded. Powerful builds to ever be introduced to the game. While other factions like the Mammal Guild and Arthropod Guild have come up with some pretty impressive ones, on land, nothing has yet topped the sheer power of the Reptile Guild's greatest achievements. Even though their massive size is perhaps their most notable trait, there was also a ton of variety in the abilities and combat strategies that these builds employed. And so today I think it's finally time to release my dinosaur tier list. Obviously there's a ton of dinosaur builds, so there's no way I can cover all of them, but I definitely will try to hit the important ones. It's worth noting that the reign of the dinosaur faction lasted more than twice as long as the reign of the mammal faction that supplanted them. And so during this huge stretch of time, dinosaur maids basically tried out every conceivable strategy, and that's why there are so many builds to talk about. But as always, we'll start from the bottom of the tier list and move up from there. At the bottom, we've got Dryosaurus and Camptosaurus, Aww. two very similar herbivore builds with an interesting stat spread. Dinosaurs oh, are known names. for their immense strength, but neither of these builds boast any sort of offensive capabilities. Instead, they have a modest but below average defensive spread, decent mobility, and above average intelligence for a dinosaur. These builds took advantage of how powerful the other herbivore builds were by sticking by the bulkier ones and relying on them to defend Fine, the herd. They also took advantage of the fact that they were faster than other herbivores, even though their mobility was lower than most predator builds. Their higher intelligence granted them more advanced perception, letting them function Once again, as I don't the like ear holes. But nonetheless, these builds were helpless on their own and were easy targets for predator mains if they were ever caught Jesus undefended. Christ. Their lack of self-sufficiency puts them in F tier, in my opinion. I think they realized this, though, because later on, this faction started specking into either extra armor on their heads are badass. or spikes on their thumbs, giving them much better options for dealing with aggressive players. What in they're D called. tier, we've got two carnivore builds, the first being Coelophysis. Coelophysis was one of the first dinosaur builds that the devs introduced. And like all of the early dinosaurs, it really was nowhere near the power level of the it sounds ones like that would what be added the doctor to the says I have in the Jurassic and Cretaceous I'm sorry, but you have Coelophysis. The only reason it became such a popular and dominant build was because it starved and dehydrated more slowly than its non-dinosaur rivals. And this isn't to say that it didn't struggle to succeed too. It absolutely did, and often had to resort to team killing just to get by. Betrayal. It sort of dominated the early dino meta by default, so I'm not going to rate it any higher than D tier. Also in D tier, we have Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus is a unique build that specced heavily into fishing abilities and aquatic adaptations, including the rare ability of Electroreception, which helped it catch fish players even when they were in stealth mode. This is great for that specific application, but Spinosaurus mains weren't actually fully aquatic. They couldn't breathe underwater and still had to spend plenty of their gameplay. I am not supposed to pause it, but they actually just Dealing figured it out that they were mostly build. aquatic. And unfortunately, I'm pretty sure. Their stats like, and abilities last week or something like that, or over the past year, with the terrestrial meta they're the actually time. pretty aquatic. Because they'd spent so many evolution points adapting their build to be able to fish, People they'd secured themselves about this for a years. unique niche at the cost of being able to hold their own in general combat. They'd get bodied by most other carnivore mains and outsped by most herbivores. I might be talking about my ass. in an awkward position. If they'd had more time, they might have been able to gain enough experience to spec into a fully aquatic build. But unfortunately, the devs decided to up the overworld temperature, raising the sea levels but drying up the rivers, leaving the Spinosaurus player base without a niche. The lesson here is that if you ever find yourself specking into the playstyle of an amphibian, you may want to reconsider how you're spending your evolution points. Last in D tier, we have the Hadrosaurs. Now, I don't have a ton to say about these builds. Generally, their main game plan is pretty oh, simple. So cute. See Predator coming <laughs> and run away. This is pretty similar to the Dryosaurus and Camptosaurus playstyle I mentioned in F tier. But instead of relying on the more powerful herbivores to defend them, they had the HP required to shrug off a hit or two, and actually had the mobility required to escape, assuming they saw the attack coming. Overall, this build was pretty easy to play, but had a low skill ceiling as well, since they had no actual combat abilities. <laughs> all in all, Boink. there's a reason players consider Hadrosaurs more forgettable among dinosaur builds. In C tier, we've got two of the most famous Jurassic builds. The first is Stegosaurus. Taking a quick Dego. look at the Stegosaurus' stats, it's clear that this build was extreme on many fronts. It had one of the lowest intelligence levels of any dinosaur, and also didn't exactly have Yo, much he's in terms dumb of shit. However, it had pretty incredible combat stats and powerful abilities to back it up. 
most notably its backplates and thagomizer. Their backplates significantly reduce the chance oh. of an attacker Ow. scoring a critical hit against them, since it's much harder oh. to bite down on a stegosaurus' weak point when there are plates in the way. Their backplates can also be flushed with blood to grant a large intimidation buff, which works great against predator and herbivore mains alike. The Thagomizer is one of the most unique weapons of any dinosaur build. The Thagomizer has one of the highest critical hit chances oh. of any weapon in the game, often dealing enough damage to one-shot most players. Because it's a tail spike, this attack has a lot of reach, making approaching a defending Stegosaurus player extremely difficult. However, the strategy was by no means perfect. Their low mobility made fleeing from battle impossible, so if an enemy did not how to subvert its defenses, Stegosaurus mains would be out of options. And since their tails weren't long enough to cover an attack from the front, that was often their downfall. Thankfully, their base game plan was relatively simple, so their low intelligence didn't hinder them too much. Also in C tier, we have every Stegosaurus main's arch enemy, Allosaurus. The Allosaurus build was unique in that it actually Allosaurus invested very little pog. into the bite attack, only having the bite strength of a lion. Instead, really? Allosaurus dealt damage by using its that head thing like a bites as hard as a lion, swinging its open jaw down onto an enemy player. This dealt heavy damage, but was nowhere near the devastating power of some of the really? top That's how it... moves. It uh... had the highest top speed of any build during its time, but had relatively low stamina, meaning it could only sprint for a short time, also similar to lions today. While one-on-one, -on -one, Allosaurus tended to get bodied by the stronger herbivore players of its time, in packs that could take down just about anything. Overall, a solid mid-tier, whose That's strategies got expanded upon funny. and refined by the later dinosaur builds. In Man, just tier, didn't have a lower jaw. did the exact opposite of what Allosaurus did, in that they put a ton of evolution points into a single combat tactic. First, the build which specced into the claw skill tree, granting it the longest claws to ever exist in the game, Therizinosaurus. Therizinosaurus were excellent in 1v1 combat, because their claws Jesus gave them incredible Christ. reach and damage, perfect for slicing at the heads of carnivore mains that were trying to bite them. Their slash attack was the strongest the game had ever seen. In fact, they put so many points into the claw skill tree that they had none left over for teeth or mobility and were actually forced to change teams from the carnivore side to the herbivore side, making them the only build from the theropod faction to opt not to be a predator. This actually worked out really well for them because they no longer had to compete with the other predator mains for XP and were also taller than most herbivore players typically seen in the forest biomes. Sure, they were lacking in intelligence and mobility, that thing's and scary. also couldn't actually gain any experience from the enemies that they defeated with their claws. But all in all, they had a surprisingly effective strategy. Not a perfect defense, as they were definitely still vulnerable to coordinated assaults, but definitely an above average build. On the opposite end of the spectrum from Allosaurus and Therizinosaurus, both of which had either weak or non-existent bite damage, we have the carnivore build that put all of its evolution points into maxing out the bite attack, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. T-Rex had the most powerful bite attack in the history of the game, able to take out any player it was able to bite in a single hit. This also gave it the ability to crush bone, letting it access the XP-rich marrow inside, similar to what hyenas do in today's meta. T-Rex was a hybrid between a predator and scavenger build. It didn't have the greatest luck taking down the heavily armored herbivores of the Cretaceous expansion, but it could certainly defeat them if the T-Rex players worked in a group. And as a scavenger, its massive size gave it the ability to steal kills from other carnivore players who had no hope of surviving its devastating bite if they got in its way. T-Rex did, however, have to sacrifice all of its other offensive strengths in order to maximize Oh its yeah, bite that damage. thing. What is its that? Its were so short that its claw attack had pathetic range, making them useless both for holding prey and fighting What's the name of that thing? And it also when it has like a fucking fast, skull of outside of its of skull, so that's players fucking saw it scary. Coming, which wasn't that hard because of its massive size. They wouldn't have too tough a time avoiding it. Still, with team strats, it was near unstoppable, and it always had the option to fall back on scavenging, so it was definitely a solid high tier. The last B-tier build I want to talk about is Triceratops. In terms of defense in a single direction, no build has ever come close to Triceratops. Their horns can deal massive damage in a single swing, even to giant carnivore builds like T-Rex. Looking at its stats, it's pretty clear that going head to head with this thing would end badly. However, one thing I've noticed is that players nowadays fail to remember its main drawback, low intelligence. This thing was pretty close to a modern day opossum in terms of brain power. And as many of you should know from my Australia video, marsupials are some of the least intelligent mammals. Aww, People assume don't do Triceratops them like that. behaved similar to a modern day elephant, since both are about the same size and sport powerful front facing smarter. weaponry. However, the herd behavior that makes elephants so untouchable by predators was absent in the Triceratops build as they were mostly solitary, and this was due to their low intelligence stat. Because of that, they were highly vulnerable from being attacked from behind. Yeah, those or things from are scary. Angles at once. 
Triceratops' low intelligence also meant that it was easily tricked into walking into ambushes set by carnivore mains, which pretty much always meant a game over for the Triceratops. As powerful as this build is, and it is powerful, don't get me wrong, I think it's definitely not a top tier dinosaur and caps out at B tier. Okay, so in A tier we've got the dinosaurs which were a bit smarter about how they invested their evolution points. First we have the Dromaeosaurs, the faction of dinosaurs that includes builds like Velociraptor, Deinonychus, and Utah Raptor. These players made an interesting choice to forego the gigantism ability that made dinosaurs so dominant in the first place, and try their hand at more of an evasive rushdown playstyle, sacrificing both their HP and defense stats to buff their mobility and DPS as best they could. Most notably, they specced into buffing a single claw on each foot, which had two important functions. The first being that it could deal massive slash and stab type damage, and the second being that it gave them the ability to hook onto players that they were targeting using the pounce attack. Overall, this build had much higher damage than normal for a build that size, and could easily take down players in a much higher weight class, especially if they attacked in a group, There's which no they often way. did. What? They had the ability to weave in and out of their opponent's attack range easily, letting them bait out and dodge attacks. The one main drawback to this build was that if it never got careless, yep. it could easily take lethal damage in a single hit. But overall, this faction was one of the most successful at the time and easily A tier. Also in A tier, we have Carcharodontosaurus. Is that what this one is? A very similar to T-Rex in terms of appearance, the but with a slightly skull different boy? plan of attack. Instead of investing purely into bite force, maxing out base damage, Carcharodontosaurus spent its evolution points specking into advanced, serrated teeth. This gave their bite attack an increased no, chance to cause one. the heavy bleed status effect, which would drain the target's HP and stamina over time. This was more cost effective than pure bite force, and let them retain enough evolution points to spec into claws too, giving them a more well-rounded combat oh, okay. style that so, could still cause lethal damage oh, from wait, a single bite. That's a fucking... This strategy is similar to the one seen employed by the Komodo yeah. Dragon player base of today's meta. They'll Car fucking poison them and then the tankier carnivore builds track them and for like off a hit or eight two, miles. Even from the builds that would normally devastate anything that they landed a hit on. This made them extremely good at PvP against the other carnivore builds at the time, making them an easy high tier candidate. The next build I have in A tier is Ankylosaurus, perhaps the best tank badass. build ever to exist in the game. This build essentially took the Segasaurus strategy and cranked it up to the most extreme it could. Instead of backplates for intimidation, the Ankylosaur players took into armor, and instead of tail spikes, they opted for a club. Their armor was so impenetrable that it made attacks from even the strongest carnivore mains pretty laughable. While their club didn't have a high crit chance like the tail spikes did, It'll it did do massive hurt. damage that could shatter bone capable of crippling any player unfortunate to take a direct hit from Ooh. it. Ankylosaurus was near invincible, except that it had one glaring flaw. Despite all of its defense and power, it was completely helpless if a player managed to flip it over. For that reason, I can't place it in top tier, because a good top it's tier a will have no surefire counterplay. Last in A tier, we have Troodon. The Troodon build was the only dinosaur build whose core strategy was based around the intelligence stat. Sure, other dinosaurs used team strategies or had advanced perception skills, both of which require some usage of intelligence. But Troodon was the only one to specifically tailor their build around having its brain be its best weapon. Troodon had to sacrifice oh, a like lot us. to get this. High intelligence requires a lot of calories to maintain, so getting the kills required to sustain both a Wait, large Wait, smarter size people and a large burn more calories? Possible, meaning that they had to give up gigantism as a trait. <sighs> That's so why I'm so fat! Instead of dagger-like claws, Troodon opted for smaller but opposable claws that could be used to pick up objects. This severely cut its potential in combat, but gave it a lot of options in terms of manipulating its environment to, for example, set up traps to catch players that would otherwise be able to evade them. It's very possible that if non-avian dinosaurs weren't banned in the Meteor Strike balance patch, Troodon players would have eventually leveled up their intelligence and now- I don't like that. Tiers, we didn't need to see to that. Humans. We- But even though it was starting to gain the power no. to dominate its environment, it still had no way to combat the other top tiers aside from just running away. So it definitely wasn't S tier. I didn't need to see that at all. In S tier, we have the most I was overpowered good. dinosaur faction of all, the sauropods. Sauropods oh, had every tool they needed to counter all other dinosaur builds. They had the maximum HP stat possible for a terrestrial build, and because they used the herd strategy, neck dinosaurs. oftentimes this meant that if a sauropod player was caught of? off guard and was under attack by several carnivore players, it could usually tank enough hits that its teammates that I just would have said, time to rescue but it. Different? And of all the dinosaurs, sauropods also had the largest Stegosaurus, and I said Stegio. Their whip-like tails may have not had the, the same names? damage per hit that Stegosaurus or Ankylosaurus did, but they were still plenty powerful, able to knock down enemies well out of reach of a counterattack. And if they did get too close, a sauropod stomp attack was literally the most devastating move in the game, knocking the target down and dealing lethal damage. 
And lastly, their extreme height gave them a massive advantage for avoiding stealth attacks, as they could see much further than other players. In terms of land superiority, sauropods truly were the most overpowered dinosaurs of all time. It's unfortunate that the devs chose to ban the dinosaurs during the KT balance patch, but alas, the meta was getting stale, so I understand why. Oh shit. Hopefully you enjoy this look back at the Mesozoic meta. If you enjoy watching videos about dinosaurs, there are a bunch of great documentaries I can recommend. For example, if nice. you're curious about Troodon and why it was- What are we gonna watch next?